Abby and this is my first vlog for English 153. Um, I'm going to mainly focus on Virginia Woolf's Moments of Being for this vlog. Um, so to start, I will be honest, I was very confused throughout the whole thing. I had to read over the different paragraphs many times and I still don't really understand it. Um, we touched on it in class, so that kind of helped a lot. And then going back and making notes to prepare for this vlog also helped me understand it better. And I got to um, take a deeper look into the language more rather than trying to analyze what Virginia Woolf was trying to say. Okay, so first I want to talk about the word pins and how it came up, came up so often in this piece. And I think that that obviously like was a red flag in my head saying like this is important and um, I was kind of confused as to what it signifies I think it definitely like represents something and um, I'm not quite sure what that is but it was just interesting how in the first sentence it is um, Slater's pins have no points don't you always find that said Miss Cray and so right off the bat, you know that something about pins, like, it's important. So, um, also, I really looked at the specific language that Virginia Woolf was using because that is something that's really interesting to me. And um, one of the things I noticed was that a lot of her paragraphs started with a quote or, um, like, a conversation for example, in the first paragraph, it starts, the first sentence is, Slater's pins have no points, don't you always find that, said Miss Gray. And then the third paragraph starts with, far more than I did, said Miss Kingston. So it's just interesting how she um, was repeating that over and over again, and the significance behind it. I personally think that she used, started each paragraph with, um, the conversational quote because not so much as to like hook a reader but to really make things interesting and um, show that these characters were conversing with each other and were um, like in the same room and that kind of helped me remember and like understand better like what was going on and not because like when you have different points of view it gets like confusing so like having um each paragraph start with a conversation you're like oh i know that this person's in this room talking to this person and it kind of clarified things for me another thing about the language that i found really interesting was um her use of parentheses and i noticed that they came up a lot throughout the whole piece but um a specific example that kind of stuck out to me was in the second paragraph and it starts, the sentence starts, it was a great privilege to stay with them, Miss King, Miss Kingston said, parenthesis, quote, my family had always known them, they were regular Canterbury people, Miss Kingston said, end parenthesis. So it was just kind of weird that, like, it didn't really seem the parent, like the parenthesis was necessary, like the, um, like normal, like modern day grammar, I feel like it doesn't make sense there unless I'm like reading the sentence wrong which is possible but um that was just one example that stuck out to me that I feel like I don't like the use of the parenthesis was kind of unnecessary and um another example is when um the sentence starts that was kind of a spell that was the glassy surface that Miss Cray wanted to break by showing when she had played Bach beautifully as a reward to a favorite pupil, parenthesis, Fanny Wilmot knew that she was Miss Cray's favorite pupil, and parenthesis, that she too knew, like other people, about pins. So, in this situation, um, I feel that it makes more sense than the first situation, but it also seems a little unnecessary. And, um... I found that very interesting. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about 
was um, the first paragraph and the last paragraph and how they were connected. And um, the first paragraph talks about how this rose fell off of Fanny's dress and that's when the pin fell on the floor. And then in the last paragraph, it comes back and says that um, Fanny pins the flower back to her breast with trembling fingers. So I thought um, that kind of jumped out at me, the fact that the whole story came full circle. And um, it was just interesting how she started it with her losing the flower off of her dress and then ending it with her pinning it back on.